I have another cutting tool from the Ukrainian company Beavercraft that I want to share with you today. This time it is their AX4 felling axe. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this tool, keep watching. Before we get started, I do want to thank Beavercraft for sending out the AX4 felling axe so that I could share it with you. Now, in full disclosure, I've had this only maybe four months. I've used it a few times, but I haven't used it extensively. But I've used it enough, and I have enough experience with axes that I will be able to give you my thoughts and opinions on it. What I won't be able to do is give you a long-term use review, at least for quite a while yet. But what I want to do at this point is just take a closer look at the axe. I'll go over its specifications, tell you what's so special about it, and then of course we'll do a few demonstrations. Just before we get into the details of the AX4 felling axe. I thought I'd show you what else Beavercraft included with it. All important and yeah you got to have something right which is a nice leather mask. Simple dome snap closure fits on nicely. I still need to treat that. It's still in its brand new condition. Let me just put the axe down for one second because I want to show you what else they included. Maybe not essential but boy what a nice accessory. A carry strap that has loops on either end so that you can put the axe over your back and carry it hands free. That is going to be nice. Actually I'll need to use that when I go from where I'm at right now to where I'll do the demonstrations because of course I got to carry the axe and the camera and whatever else I have to go with me. So this is a nice feature as well. Now I'm going to go through the specifications very, very quickly. I'll do them in, in English only because I'll put both English and metric in the video description so that you can reference it there. It just saves a tiny bit of time, right? Okay, 25.2 inches overall. This is a big axe. It is a felling axe. It is full size. There's nothing small about this. This is not a pack axe and I'll tell you I did feel the weight in my backpack when I carried it out today. So the blade um, height, if you will, is 4.92 inches from here and then from the pommel or from the pommel to the tip it is 5.9 inches. It's heavy. It comes in or just the head weight, not the total weight. The head weight is a full two pounds. So you, yeah, it's got quite a bit of weight. Now this is where things get a little interesting. Uh, Beavercraft is using the same steel in their axes that they do in their knives, which is the 1066 high carbon steel. So this is a higher carbon content steel than most axes are. This one, uh, most of them are in the 1050, 1055, I've even seen 1045 carbon steel. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, that remains to be seen. Usually the higher the carbon content, the harder the bit gets, depending on how it's heat treated, of course, but also the more easily it will chip. No experience with chipping so far on this, but again, this is not a long-term review. I will tell you, it can take a wicked, wicked edge on it with a little bit of uh, work. It is convex grind, which is what you want on, a, uh, on an axe. It has an ash wood handle. I'm going to show you a little bit more about the handle in a minute. And uh, yeah, it is hand forged. Now, can you see it's got a bit of a Nordic look to, if you will, a bearded axe. You can see it's actually got a double beard kind of a look to it. Uh, all the forging marks and actually most of the forging material is or the uh, what are the scale I think it's called is on, still on the axe. So it is uh, heavy duty. That's one way of saying it. I'm gonna, I'll give you a few profile. Actually let me give you the profile on it now because uh, this is really does. Can you see where the weight is? The weight is up here through the cheeks. This is where all the weight is because that is a very, very thin bit, as you can see, which is what you want in a felling axe. It's all about how deep you can get the axe to bite into the wood to make the chip fly, so to speak. It works as a splitting axe. That's not what it's intended for, but it does so mostly because of its weight, not because of the design of the blade. It's really not intended for that. And I have found it will stick into wood if you try to use it as a splitting axe. There is a brass wedge right there. You can see it just protrudes, the, the handle protrudes just up over the top. And I can see a little bit of a flare, so it's given just enough of a grip on it. I can't say how long this will hang on to the handle. I, expect, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be as good as any other axe in this classification. Um, but again, it's not a long-term review. The cheeks on it, where they extend down here, uh, there is an ear. I think that's the name of what they're often called. This is mostly a classic thing that you'll see on the Scandinavian axes. It's supposed to give more bite between the head and the axe handle itself. Uh, you know, this is, there's not a lot to it, and they're sharp. 
So that's just something to be aware of. When you're sliding your hand up, I felt I got bit by these edges. So I'm probably gonna round them off just a tiny bit. It's more of an aesthetic to give it that Viking look, I guess, if you will. And uh, yeah, so the ash handle, this is what's cool about it. I'll comment on its design and shape in a minute, but I really, really want you to see this. Hopefully this is gonna show up without swinging it. Can you see the grain orientation on this? Perfectly vert vertical. And this is where it gets important. The longer the ax, the more impact the ax and the handle will take, the more you need that stability right down through the handle and, uh, you, and still obviously a little bit of flex. Not only is that perfectly orientated, look how tight the grain is. Is that showing up? I'm hoping it is. Yeah, I think it is. Look how tight the grain is. This is not a cheap ax handle. This is a well picked out piece of wood. They would spent a lot of time getting the ax handle right in terms of the quality of the materials. Now the coloring on the outside, I can't tell if it's a stain or if it's a little bit of roasting, but you can see it's a little darker than the natural wood would be, but there's no coatings. It's absolutely smooth and it's almost polished smooth. There's no roughness on it at all, but it, it does slide through your hands very, very nicely. Now, um, by the way, beaver craft symbol right there up there by the head okay a few things about this handle and there these were i i expect are personal preferences mine do you see how it has a bump right here okay not a big deal but my hand doesn't want to close around it very comfortably so if i'm way up here holding onto the top of the axe this is just a little annoying and it really doesn't do a whole lot for the strength of the axe i don't know if it does anything honestly so uh for me personally, I'm probably going to take that bump off and bring it a little bit closer to the thickness of the haft here and here because it really doesn't need to be there. You're not setting, the ax head isn't setting that low and it's just, I don't know, I wouldn't say terrible, just a little awkward for my hand. The other part is, is where the ax handle extends right down here. Can you see that there's a bump here? And um, not uncommon on a lot of axe designs, but it's actually, I don't know if this will show up or not, it's actually kind of pointed in this direction. Not uncomfortably so, but noticeably so is the best way to say it. So what happens is, is when my hand closes around that and I grab it uh, quite tightly, of course, when I swing it'll be my left hand, I feel that in the palm of my hand. Not painful, it's just noticeable. And as a result, I don't feel I get all the grip that I want when I swing the ax. I actually like thinner handles down towards the bottom. This, you know, what's nice is, this is easily fixed, right? A nice rasp, and I can take this down and shape this area just a little bit more, and then put a little bit of uh, linseed oil on it. And I think it'll be as close to perfect as possible. Now, there is one comment I want to make on this, and this was actually raised by a friend of mine who knows a little bit more about axes than I do, and that is the cost. This is not an inexpensive axe. This sells for $199 US on Beavercraft's website. That's taking it right into the range of the Scandinavian axes. So a lot of the question is, is you know, is it as good as a Scandinavian axe? Well, the truth is, is I don't know. You know, I, I can tell you it performs wonderfully, but I can't tell you what the long term will be on this. Having said that, I can tell you that the Scandinavian axes that I do own are a little bit more finely finished in both the haft and in the blade. They intentionally left the scale on so that you knew this was hammer forged, and I think that's all part of the aesthetic doesn't do anything functionally it's just you know it doesn't look as refined as a Scandinavian axe does it perform like one well I'll, well I'll show you in a minute what it performs like so I'm going to say yes long term that's what I can't answer at this point okay that's all the detail about the axe itself the only thing left to do is to take it to where I know there's a down tree that I can do a little bit of swinging on all right so the tree that I'm going to be demonstrating on is an oak tree it has been down about a year actually there's still some dry brown leaves on the far end of this tree so it hasn't been 
down all that long. Uh, you may recognize this from another video or two other videos I did where I compared the Cold Steel SRK both in the SK5 and the 3V version as well as the Demco Free Rain in their AOS 10A and Magna Cut versions. Actually there are the chopping points right here where I did that work and another set of them further down the trunk of the tree. So uh, this is the one I'm going to be working on because it's a down tree and it's still in good shape and it will should give good demonstration to the axis capabilities. Now a few things. It is is eight inches in diameter so it's not a large tree but then again it is oak. Uh, the other thing is it's not freestanding but it is kind of supported at the far end by its branches so you can probably see the movement here which means my axe is going to bounce. I'm going to try to work my way up the trunk a little bit closer to where the uh, trunk is laying on the ground just to uh, minimize that a little bit but as a result you're going to see bounce and that does affect performance of course and and you have to be more careful because of safety. The last thing I'll say before we get started is I'm on a slope it's got to be 25 degrees downwards you can probably see the way the tree is going downwards so I'll be working on a bit of a slope again making sure that I don't have any place to fall and uh, yeah I probably won't go all the way through because of the springiness of this but you know I don't think it's necessary to get an idea of just how how deep the axe will bite. All right so my space around me is clear and we'll work here and uh, one of the things of course to always take into consideration is if the axe does come through where is it going to go? Can it go towards you? You don't want that of course. But the nice thing is the longer the handle of the axe the more likely it is to impact the ground before it impacts you. So I think I'm okay to work here. Let's start get our initial chop in. I'll probably speed up the each of these section of chopping just well okay we'll get started and we'll see where it goes. All right, I have my gap not quite as wide as my axe bit is, so I need to make it a little bit wider if I decide to go the rest of the way through. But you can see it, uh, the wood is hard, but the axe is biting in. Or a few more swings. All right, uh, that's hard wood, okay. Uh, I chose oak, well, because it's the tree that's down and one that's available to me. It's not a great demonstration tree because it is a hard wood, especially this is dry, mostly dry. There is a little bit of moisture still in it, which is not unexpected for it only being down about a year. Okay, uh, I think that's enough of a demonstration to show you what the ax is capable of, Let's wrap this video up. Looking in the viewfinder and I can see that I'm in a lot of shadow. The sun is just up here to in front of me to my right a little bit, but heavy canopy above. So that's uh, hopefully you can still see me. All right, so not an extensive demonstration of the use of the AX4 Axe from Beavercraft, but I think enough for you to see that this hits hard and bites deep so that uh, that's what you're looking for in a felling axe. Now I chose a down tree of course because I, I don't cut living trees unless I have a real need to. This one was already down and actually I'm going to be using a piece of this for something else today on a different demonstration so again another good reason to work with this one. Overall impressions and yeah there's still initial impressions even though I've, had, I've got a little bit of time on it is that this is a really really high quality axe built to a high standard using good steel hardened I think I didn't know, know if I mentioned this 56 58 on the Rockwell scale that's a little higher than normal as well for an axe if it's not I'll correct it on the screen right now but uh, yeah my only not even cons things to be aware of that's what I'll call them. 
This bites if you let your hand slide all the way up here. So it might take a little bit of a something Dremel file sandpaper just to take those edges off so they don't bite. I don't really need that. It, I guess it doesn't seriously impair my operation of the axe unless I'm working way up here at the top. But when I do, I just find that a little uncomfortable. And I have no loss of control. I don't want to mislead you to think that this provides loss of control or hurts my hand or anything. It's just, that's a, again, just a comfort thing. There's where I grab onto it down at the bottom. I'd just like it to be a little thinner through here. You may not, and don't automatically start working on your axe if you purchase one of these. Having said that though, I'd be interested. Do you have an AX4 felon axe from Beavercraft? If you do, what are your impressions of it? How has it been working out for you? Is there anything you would change about it? Would you give it a recommendation for other people as well? So put that in the comments section below. If you have any other comments or questions about the AX4, then put those in the comments section. As I mentioned, all the specifications and the links to where you can take another look at this will be in the video description. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.